All right, so six, seven, day one. We have in the past talked about arithmetic sequences and geometric sequences, right? Uh, raise your hand, tell me what's the difference between arithmetic and geometric? What's the difference here? Awesome. Arithmetic is like a linear equation, and geometric is like um, an exponential. Okay, so in terms of what we see in the sequence, how are we going to know if it's that uh, arithmetic or that geometric? Okay. Perfect. So we know the difference between arithmetic and geometric, right? In the past, we've had equations where we found the 34th term, right? The 75th term, all of that. We're not necessarily looking at that equation today. But we're coming up with a, a different form. This is going to be called a recursive rule. Okay, so we're looking at recursive rules here in 6.7. Recursive rules are different in that we can't use it to find a term that's way far off. We're not going to use a recursive rule to find the 117th term. Right? What a recursive rule does is it describes the sequence describes the sequence okay it doesn't allow us to get super far but it does describe the sequence so let me show you an example of a uh, recursive rule here and we're going to talk through and see what we kind of what we notice about it and then I have to get it on the screen to be helpful all right so here is our first recursive rule. This is what it looks like. Yeah. Okay. Um, the, the first, the A, is the one to C, that's the first term. Yeah, so the first part of it, and there are two parts, right? They separated by a comma. There's just, I want you to know, there's two parts to every recursive rule. The first part, exactly as Brent said, that still tells us our first term. We have to know our first term. We gotta know where to start. With our sequence. So we have our first term. A sub one is that first term. The second part here, we haven't seen something like this before. We've seen a sub n, right? That's the nth term. A sub n minus one, that just means this is the term before this one. This is the term before this. So to find any term, you're going to take the term before it, and what are you going to do to it? No. What are you going to do to it? So you're going to add three. So that means we take a term, we add three, that gives us our next term. So what type of sequence is this? Sure. Arithmetic, because we're adding the same thing every time, okay? When you see a recursive rule, and this is an arithmetic recursive rule here, arithmetic recursive, most of this is going to look the exact same every time. You're always going to have a sub one equals something. You're going to have a sub n equals a sub n minus one plus or minus something. So the two boxes are the only things that are going to change when we go to create our recursive rules or when we're looking at recursive rules. Those are the only things that are going to be different. Everything else is going to be the exact same. Okay. So we don't worry about the fact that it's minus one here. That doesn't do anything for us. That's just saying we're going to take a term, we're going to do this to it to reach the next one. Right? Just sort of explaining uh, what our sequence looks like and what we're doing. Okay. Nope, it's always going to be a one. All right. Awesome. Um, the first thing is to subtract one. No, nope, we're not subtracting one. We're not. This is just saying this is the term before this. That's it. So this just says we're going to take each term, we're going to add three, and we're going to reach the next one. We're not subtracting one from the Okay. Uh, isn't there a popular recursive sequence that's like the, uh, the two numbers before the number? Yes, and, and we'll talk about it tomorrow. Okay. Yep, absolutely right. Let's uh, remember that for tomorrow. Okay. All right, so the type question you're going to see here. Exactly what we see, right? The first six terms. I just want you to write the first six terms of the sequence. We know where we're starting, we know what we're doing every time. Write the first six terms. Okay.
first next year or the first six terms of Okay. Here we go. So there are our first six terms, right? This is always our first term. So they tell us where we're starting. They tell us what we're doing every time. We're adding three every time. There you go. Okay. Yeah. What would be like a multiply by three for geometric rule? So for a geometric recursive rule, good transition. This is the geometric recursive rule. Notice it looks very, very similar, right? It's very similar. We're still going to have a sub one equals something. So they're still going to tell us our first term. But then instead of adding something to the end of a sub n minus one, we're multiplying by something. Okay. They just put that multiply in front. We always put numbers in front of what we're multiplying in terms of variable. So this is our common ratio here. This is our first term. Okay. So it's our first term and then what we're multiplying by every time. That's the only difference. When we see it with multiplication there, like we do on the right, that's the geometric version. On the left, that was the arithmetic version. Okay. Okay. So these all, like, are, is that the only thing we're going to do? Or is there more coming up? Okay. So our first term, and then what we're doing every time. Go ahead, find the first six terms, please. Just there telling you, yeah, we're taking that and then what we're doing to it. All right, so we see it here. We got our first six. 139.7812.43, but we're multiplying by every time. Okay, multiplying by that three. Any questions so far? Darren. Are you doing anything else with the n minus one? That is just, we, we don't do anything with the minus one. This right here is just saying, I'm taking whatever, we're taking every term. We're multiplying it by three to get to the next term. This just represents the term before this one. That's it. Okay. All right. So the other way that we are going to see this is they are going to give us the sequence and we have to create the recursive rule. Okay, so they're going the other way on it. Now, as you do this, as you create your recursive rule, remember there are two parts to every recursive rule. You have to tell me where to start. So you gotta give me a sub one and then you gotta give me the rule of what we're doing every time. Okay, right. go ahead and create your recursive rule for both of these using what we just did as kind of your example. Obviously, we got to figure out whether it's arithmetic or geometric because we're doing the right one. Talk something about it. Remember, we need the two parts for each one. Two parts for each one. Okay. 
the second one is plus one. Yeah. The second one is five hundred and ninety-nine. Which I'm fine. Super. Okay. Super. 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 Wait, do you want me to give you like everything? Yeah, the whole thing. The first term was negative 30. Okay. And then if it's an equals an minus one plus 12. There we go. Okay, so we got a sub one equals negative 30. That's the first term. Then we have what's happening to it. We got a sub n equals a sub n minus one plus 12. Okay, good. That is arithmetic. We're adding 12 over 10. How about our second one here for B? Anybody, what do you got? Um, I got. First term is 500, and then I got a sub n equals a sub n minus 1 over 0.2. It's not going to be over 0.2. If we go over 0.2, these numbers are going to end up getting bigger. So that's dividing by a decimal. If not that tie, what do we got? If you had multiplied by 0.2, then it would work. Okay, we just can't divide that. So we got one fifth a sub n minus one. So you're multiplying by one fifth every time. I heard multiple people that originally had five down. Be careful on that, right? We're getting smaller. We're multiplying by that fraction every time. Okay, be careful on it. All right, the only other part that goes along with this that you're going to see on big ideas is they're going to have a graphing part to it where if they give you this, like we saw first, right, where they gave us the rule. We had to come up with the first six. Then they're going to say, choose which graph is correct. Just remember, this is one comma negative 30, two comma negative 18, three comma negative six. And they're just going to ask which graph is right. I don't even need you to sketch that part down. Just give me an A, B, C, D, whichever graph is right. Okay. That's it. So I thought you had to